What's going on guys? It's your boy Justice Annie. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. You know, I've never really gotten too personal with y'all before. And I feel like right now with everything that's going on, it might be the best time to share a little bit more about my story with y'all, right? 27 years old. I'm a first generation American, Punjabi. Uh, you know, I've been living my entire life here in the States, the United States specifically. But you know, when it came down to it, I wanna just kind of go through and tell you guys a little bit about my life. Cause I feel like the reason why I'm successful today is not only just by my upbringing, but also just by the experience that I experienced during the time of these past 27 plus years. Early on, uh, I'm born in the Bay. I'm born in Hayward, California, right? So I'm born in June 21st, 1996. I was born in Hayward, California to my beautiful mom and dad. And uh, I had an older sister too. Her name's Justine. She's five years older. When I was born, my parents had just come to uh, America. My mom specifically had just came to America. My dad immigrated to the USA when he was about 21. Uh, you know, in India, we come from uh, villages in Punjab where you know my mom and my dad's side of the family they had land they did farming and then my mom and her family and that side of the family they also did farming in their own different villages my dad was uh 21 came to america and it's crazy because he really had the american dream back when i think the american dream was still a real thing he came to america in a time where it was damn near impossible to get any type of paperwork you know He's a citizen now, but believe it or not, way back in the day, he actually, uh, he said he went to Singapore. He traded itinerary with some random guy at the airport. That guy was going to Mexico. My dad's flight was to Germany or something like that. So they exchanged a passport or uh, they exchanged their itineraries. Back then, you know, you don't have the QR code on your phone. So they exchanged the paperwork. Somehow he made it to Mexico. He found himself a mule to help him get across the border. Uh, and, you know, he ended up getting caught, sent back to Mexico, caught again, going to jail, uh, spent time in jail, got out of jail, and then went to New York and started the dream, right? I remember he told me he used to live in a one-bedroom apartment with four other Punjabi guys, uh, undocumented, no paperwork. But, you know, he had such a desire for what he wanted out of his life and for his future and for his kids. And I tell you this, the, the biggest reason I have success today is because of the effort that my dad put in, right? And you gotta think about it, being 21, coming to a new country, you don't know the language, you don't know the people, and just going all in was insane. My dad came to America in the 80s, he did his thing, you know, uh, he was living in Queens. Uh, fast forward, him and my mom get married, he goes back to India, they have an arranged marriage, they get married. And from there, uh, they have my sister. Uh, when my sister's three, they finally get their paperwork sorted, they come to America. And then for two years, they're living, you know, in California. And finally, they decided to do the best thing they ever did in their lives. And <laughs> they had me, right? I remember when I was really, really young, some of my first memories was I was born. And I remember we lived in a one bedroom apartment in Fremont, California. It's crazy because uh, not too long ago, I was in California and I drove by that apartment. And just like the amount of memories I had in like the first portion of my life just kind of all came back. And in this one bedroom apartment, I remember my mom worked a security job. My little tiny frail mom had a security job. She worked nights. My dad worked at a trucking company during the day. It was called Iron Mountain or something like that. Uh, you know, my parents came and, you know, they, 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 they put their work in for us so that we could be in this place and have any opportunity in the world. From Fremont, we ended up moving to Sacramento. Sacramento was a fun time. We moved out of apartment. We had our first house. Like I could run around. I remember going to elementary school and having friends and, and you know, like really having a nice childhood, like a wholesome, nice childhood. Like life was good around this time. 2005, property values in California were going through the roof. So my dad decided to sell his home because one of his friends gave him an idea and uh, we picked up and we went to Texas. So once we got to Texas, the year was like 2005, right? My dad sold a house he bought for 130, 160. He, sold, he bought a house for 130, 160 in the early 2000s. Uh, he sold that house for like almost half a million dollars. We moved to Texas and we went from a three bedroom, two bathroom house to a five bedroom, five bathroom, huge crib, backyard, two stories. Like I thought life was so good. For a number of years, we lived in, in Texas and uh, my dad started his own trucking company, ended up getting into a huge car accident, almost lost his life. During that time, he was just like, I didn't want to do that anymore. You know, he was out driving a truck, uh, you know, days and days and days at a time driving the truck, not home, never was around. 
wasn't there for basketball games, wasn't there for soccer games. And, you know, I saw that and I was just like, damn, you know, I hope that when I'm older and I have to work, I could find a way to make money and not have to ever miss any big event with my family. After his car accident, we end up, he, we end up going to the temple to pray. We went to Gurdwara, you know, we're Punjabi. So we went to Gurdwara to pray and he, full circle moment, he, as we're walking into the temple in, in North Texas, he finds an old friend from 20, 30 years ago walking into the same temple. And this was one of the four guys who lived in that one bedroom apartment in New York that I mentioned earlier. He starts telling my dad that Oklahoma is like the greatest place ever, so good for business, blah, blah, blah. And this guy convinces my dad to buy a small business in a small town. At this point, we're living in Texas. Life is really good. Uh, I got good friends living in a great area, good schools, just sixth grade, about to start sports, like super excited for life. And then boom, overnight, car accident, all this stuff happens. My dad ends up wanting to move. We buy a business in Oklahoma. I'm going into seventh grade and uh, we moved to a small little town called Duncan, Oklahoma. Now, mind you, uh, I've never been in a small town America. Even though some parts of living in Oklahoma was charming, it was a lot of parts that it wasn't, right? We moved from a nice area to moving into like a trailer park, not trailer park, but we moved into like a mobile home, right? My dad bought a business. It was like a convenience store, grocery store, gas station, uh, deli. Uh, I mean, this, this town is not big at all. There's a Walmart and that's pretty much it. Like, like if you could picture that, it's maybe 15 to 20,000 people, Walmart, and then some, some, some little shops, mom and pop type deals. You know, this was probably the most humbling time of my life. Cause you know, we came from a place where I wasn't really that grateful for what I was having to moving into a place where we lived in a small, uh, three bedroom, one bathroom mobile home. You know, my parents had this store, this business, and I had to work at the store every day. I had to do something. I had to clean. I had to help customers pack ice. I had to always do something. Living in Oklahoma was interesting because like, you know, it was just, just like, you know, no disrespect to Duncan. I still love Duncan, but like it was a lot of good people. And then there was a lot of bad people, but that's anywhere. There was a lot of rednecks. There was a lot of racism. Uh, and that's something that I had to endure for a number of years. I was like one of the only Indian kids in my town. There might've been one other Indian kid. At that time, it was, it was just the wildest thing because my whole life got flipped around. I had no friends, um, you know, Still tried out for sports, you know, played basketball in Duncan. It was a lot of fun, whatever the case was. But during that time, I was so bored. And, you know, my parents being just cheap Indians at the time, we didn't even have like satellite TV, cable TV, dish, whatever you want to call it. So I remember I would be sitting on the computer all day long at my parents' store. So I would go to the back and like the, uh, like the, just the back of the store, like where the employees can only go. And there was a computer. And uh, because I didn't have TV or internet at the time, I had a little flip phone. Uh, you had to pay to send a text message. This is like 2006. No, no, no. This is like 2008. I'm so bored. I got nothing to do. I have no TV. Watched all the movies, all the DVDs that we had at the time, all the VHSs. I'd watched everything that I wanted to watch. I started getting on the internet and I started just looking stuff up, started like wanting to learn how to do things. And I, I really wanted to start learning how to make money, right? Around this time, my dad got me an iPod touch. And if you guys know me in real life or you know me <laughs> even through the internet, like don't let the flashy lifestyle, don't let the like Lambos or whatever fool you. Like above and beyond everything else, I'm honestly a fucking geek. <laughs> like I'm a nerd, like I'm really into technology. I'm really into tech. I'm really into, you know, different products. Like I kid you not, I've had like 20 different monitors for my setups, right? This isn't even my main setup, but I've had so many different like monitors and tech items. And, you know, this was something that always really, really, really interested me was like tech technology. Just like, I always wanted to be a product reviewer. Maybe in the future I will be. But at that time I had this iPod touch. Maybe you had an iPod touch too. And when I had this iPod touch, what was crazy was I was on YouTube looking stuff up, looking stuff up, looking stuff up. And what had happened was I came across a video that said, uh, jailbreak your iPhone. So I'm like, all right, what the hell does jailbreak your iPhone mean? I, uh, I look it up. I figure out how to do it. I learned that I can get free apps and free games and free music on my iPod and all this extra stuff. So I was like, fuck it, let's do it. I get the iPod jailbroken. I take it to school and, you know, I'm swinging my dick around at school that my iPod could do way more than everybody else's. 
And everyone's just like, damn, that's crazy. They're like, can you do that for my phone? And then someone was like, yo, I'll even pay you to do it. And he was like, here's 40 bucks. So I took this kid's phone home with me and um, he gave me the $40 and I jailbroke his phone and then I taught him how to use it. I taught him how to get the free apps, all the extra stuff. Like it was like a little app, you call, you, it's called Cydia or something. You click it and then you can download whatever you want. At that point, once I got that $40 and I saw that the $40 was real and tangible, it was in my hand, right? I had like a clicking moment. And this is where entrepreneurship kicked in for the first time in my life. So boom, I made this $40. I'm lit, and then we start flexing our iPhones and our iPods at school. Now everybody wants their thing jailbroken, right? So I remember I would come home from school. I'd open up my like my little gym bag, right? Because it was cool to have a gym bag, not a book bag. I'd open up the gym bag, and I'd have like four or five iPods, two or three iPhones, an iPad, whatever. And I would sit there for hours at the store. I kid you not, literally hours and hours and hours at the store. And I jailbreak this phone, set it all up. And then I would tell the, the the person to come pick it up at this time. They come, I give them money, blah, 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 they give me money, blah, 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 and we'd keep it moving. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the little girls in the town that I like too would come and, you know, I'd give them a little discount, $20, da, da, da. But, you know, jokes aside, that was my first real experience with entrepreneurship. I made, I can't even tell you, I made maybe like $1,000, my first $1,000, maybe 700 not exactly sure, but I made my first bit of bread. And then after that, I was always trying to figure out other ways to make money. Because once I jailbroke everyone's phones and the hype was over, like, you know, some kids started figuring out how to do it on their own and all the extra stuff. And you know how that goes. From Oklahoma, I lived in Oklahoma from the time I was in seventh grade to 11th grade. Even though this was a very humbling time, I realized that in Oklahoma, it was like a sunken place. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, Get Out, but Oklahoma was a sunken place. What do I mean by that? It was a place, it was an environment where nobody really wanted you to grow or come out of that environment. I seen people living their entire lives in that town, never leaving the town. And it's not to shit on the town, it's just small town America. Like people, it's just a mindset. And I knew that I wanted to be rich and successful. At one point I wanted to be famous, but now I don't really care about that. But you know, at one point I wanted to be, you know, successful and I knew and I was I knew I was destined for some type of success. The biggest thing about that was not that I was necessarily destined for success, but I knew that I had to get out of this town to become something of my life, like to have something come out of my life. So at the time, my sister, she's in medical school, she's or she's in college, university, whatever it is. Uh, she's living in Denton, Texas, Dallas, Texas, whatever you wanna say. The summer after my junior year of high school, I go to live with her for the summer uh, to go have fun. And then I was also taking dual credit classes. The dual credit classes allowed me to take college classes as a high school student so that once I got to college, I would already be ahead of the game. And that was my trick, right, of, of escaping Oklahoma. So for the summer, I went, I had a great time. I rekindled all my friendships with my old friends from when I was in middle school in that same area. Um, I started having fun, you know, sneaking out, going out places, doing, you know, bad shit. You know how it is, right? Partying, going to little bars and lounges and all that fun stuff. But summer had come to an end. It was time for school to start. On the first day of school, my senior year back in uh, Duncan, Oklahoma, there was a gun threat at school. And mind you, a few weeks earlier, there was like a murder that happened in the town. And there's there a whole bunch of... There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff that was happening in that town around that time. There's several people that have been murdered. There'd been like shootings and a whole bunch of crazy shit. So I was like, yo, this is my chance. I told my mom and my dad, I was like, yo, I don't want to live here. I was like, if I live here, this is what my life's going to be. And then my mom and my dad were sad. They were crying. They were like, yo, if you leave, like, what are we going to do? And you know, it hurt to leave them. But that same day, I packed all my stuff in the car. I drove to Texas. School in Texas, my senior year of high school started two weeks after that. Man, from there, uh, moved to Texas, finished out my senior year of high school, amazing. And I ended up getting my first job, right? Around the same time, I was really into sneakers, still am. If you see my collection, you know it's OD. But at the time, I was coming out of high school, I had a few pairs of sneakers just from like, you know, family giving me money, birthdays, you know, little things here and there, whatever. And then I realized I could start making money reselling sneakers. At that point, I would buy a pair of Jordans, I would sit on it for a little while, and then I would flip it, 
make like $50, $100, things like that. Around that same time, I ended up getting my first job and that was at DSW Shoes, right? I applied at the DSW in Denton, Texas. I ended up working at the DSW in Louisville, Texas. Now, the thing about me is I always had the best work ethic, the best attitude. I never th looked at work as a job until somebody pissed me off. And then when someone pissed me off, uh, I wasn't fucking with it no more. I could not be there. I could not whatever. But for the longest time, I was like a great employee at DSW. You know, all the customers really liked me. Uh, I, I could help stock the shoes on the shelves. Like it was a huge store. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a DSW shoes, but this one specifically was huge. It was like thousands and thousands and thousands of pairs of, you know, men's shoes and, and really mostly women's shoes, but crazy, crazy, crazy time. So I worked there. I was going to community college. After so long of working there, I was just like, huh, I'm like one of the best employees. I'm getting the most recruits or signups for the, the company's uh, point program, whatever the heck it was. And, you know, customers just really fucked with me, right? So after a while, I asked for a raise and they came back and they gave me like a 25 cent raise or a 50 cent raise. And for me, I just felt like it was like a slap in the face when they tried to offer me uh, like the 30 cent raise or the 50 cent raise. So at that point, I was just like, you know, I'm not busting my ass for this place no more. One day it was funny. The Indian guy came into the, uh, the store and he was just like, hey, you're Indian because he saw my name tag. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm Pajabi, yeah. And then he was just like, yo, he's like, let me use your employee discount. And I was like, you cheap fuck. And uh, I ended up letting this guy use my employee discount. And uh, his name was Abhishek, right? We called him AJ. In regards to AJ, AJ had a brother named VJ. His name's Vipul, right? So AJ was just like, hey, he's like, come work for me. He's like, my brother, he's opening this, these Verizon stores. He owns like five Verizon stores. Come work for us. So at that point, I was just like, <laughs> let's get it. I ended up putting my two weeks in at, at DSW. They're all really sad because outside of being a great employee, I was also like everyone's favorite person, right? And, um, you know, in regards to it, what happened next, what would happen next? What happened next was I went and started working at Verizon Wireless with VJ. Uh, VJ taught me a lot about uh, business and sales and stuff like that. And, you know, for a long time, I was working at Verizon Wireless and then I was just going to school. And then one day down the line, uh, I went to some party. I went to a party. Uh, I actually got my eyebrows split open the same week. I was playing basketball, crossed someone over. And then uh, next play, the guy threw the ball at my face, hit my glasses, cut my thing. Like, well, it is what it is. Go to my Instagram. You can see it's all the way, scroll all the way down. You can see where I crossed them over. But uh, getting back to it, this week, uh, it was like a, it was like a, there's there's these there's these South Asian uh, Indian dance competitions that happen at universities, right? Um, it's called the Bhangra Blitz, and uh, it's like all different ethnicities and different Indians and South Asian people come together, and it's just like a big dance off type thing. And then after the actual event and the charity and stuff like that, everyone goes to the club, and then you know you you, you get lit. We go to this event, we end up going to the club, and. Uh, this is the night my life changed forever. At this point in my life, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm selling sneakers, making money, reselling sneakers. I'm working at Verizon Wireless. I'm going to community college for literally no reason, right? You know, my parents are Indian, so it's either you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you're clipped, right? So I'm going to school for no reason. I'm working this job thinking, yo, Verizon, okay, well, VJ owns all these stores. Maybe I can make money. When I got closer to him, I realized that he was only making like 150, 160K a year. And I'm like, damn, okay, yeah, you got a nice house and you have a BMW, but you're only making 160K a year and you're exchanging all your time and energy for money. I was just like, I thought that working at Verizon, I would open up my own Verizon stores and I, I would be a successful business owner like that. But that wasn't necessarily the case either. I knew I needed something. And that night when I was at the club, I met an Indian kid and an Asian kid. It's funny because at the time I had a friend, his name is Fu. We're still friends. Uh, you know, Fu's too cool for school. He doesn't want to talk to anybody anymore. Asian kid, me Indian, Harold and Kumar type vibes. I meet another Indian Asian kid. Uh, his name was Matt and Yannick. Talk to these kids, you know, they, they were in the club, jumping around, dancing. It was lit, whatever. And I asked these guys, I was like, yo, what do y'all do? And the Asian dude, Yannick, he was like, oh, we trade Forex. I was like, what the fuck is Forex? He's like, foreign exchange. I was like, okay, I'm familiar with foreign exchange. I've gone to India. I understand exchanging currency. I was like, I was like, y'all make bread? And uh, I kid you not, he pulled out his phone. He showed me an account that 
showed 40K profit. I don't know if it was the day, the week, the month, the year, whatever it was, but that was what it was. Come to find out later on down the line, these dudes were scammers. They showed me a demo account. I uh, ended up giving this dude like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of my money at the time, which was like millions of dollars back then, right? And he pocketed some of it. He blew the rest of it. This happened like two or three times, whatever. But the dude exposed me to Forex trading, right? Down the road, uh, I learned about this trading company. This is like early 2016. At the time, there's nothing in the industry about Forex. YouTube was dead. You know, your favorite Forex traders today, uh, your favorite influencers did not exist. We all kind of came up around the same time. But craziest thing, I learned about Forex trading and it just kept on popping up. And I literally kid you guys not, I was praying to God and I was like, God, please let this be real. And it's crazy is because that was the first time in my life I feel like God really like aligned me in the right direction for what was to come because it was real and my life did change. It didn't change overnight, but it changed over the span of a few years. And it was crazy because I remember the first six months of trading, it was terrible. You know, I was eating ass, like I was losing money. Uh, mind you, remember I was a big sneaker head. I had a lot of sneakers, right? I had about 50 to 60 pair. So transition that into the street value around the time is probably like 10, 12, 13 ish K in sneakers, right? Over the next six months after learning about Forex trading, I one, quit going to community college and I two, quit my job. And it's not because I had made millions and millions of dollars. No, I didn't even make any money. I was actually negative. It was because I had so much belief that this was gonna be the thing that I've waited my entire life for. I had so much belief that this was gonna be it and no matter what, I was going to be successful in this industry. And, you know, the biggest thing I can say is the reason why I had so much belief was not because of trading. I knew that trading was a vehicle, but I believed in myself more than I believed in anything else. So I knew that I could be successful by doing this. And it was crazy because, you know, I lied to my parents. You know, if you guys are uh, have any type of foreign parents, you guys know. I got homies that are foreign, Nigerians, uh, you know, Eastern Europeans, Asians. And it's across the board. It's either you got to have a, a degree and not even just a degree, a good degree, lawyer, doctor, engineer, something like that, or you're disowned. Right. So, you know, I was lying to my parents. I lied to them about school, lied to them about everything. They said, yo, we're going to give you six months to make this trading thing happen. During that six months window, uh, I'd lost probably 10 plus thousand dollars. I think I mentioned that already, but I'd lost all my money uh, and uh, I was still pushing but they saw how much belief I had in myself and how much belief I had in the vision. So they kept letting me go on and on and on and on, right? And then, um, you know, fast forward, I started trading at 19. At 20, I made my first six figures. I don't know if I mentioned this or not yet, but at 20, uh, I had my breakthrough and uh, I, had a, I had two pairs of shoes left. You know, I was selling my sneakers, putting money into the market, losing money have a thousand dollar day, have a thousand dollar negative night, make 600 today, lose 500 tomorrow. It was a vicious cycle. Finally had a breakthrough. I heard a saying, somebody said, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And then when I really thought about that, I was like, damn, if nothing changes, nothing changes. If the last six months of my life look like shit, if I don't do anything better, the next six months are going to look the same freaking way. So I was just like, all right, cool. Let's, let's stop gambling and let's start tapping in and tuning in. At that point, at the same time, I also got to the point where I had a breakthrough on the charts. So I had two pairs of shoes left. The ones that were on my feet, I had three pairs. The ones on my feet, Jordan uh, 1s, low top Jordan 1 blue, Royal Blues, right? And then uh, I had two pairs of Yeezys, Pyro Blacks, Turtle Doves, OG 2016 release. I sold both of those for a $2,000 package. I kid you not, that $2,000 absolutely changed my life. That 2K in a matter of a few short months went from two to 8K, went from 8K to 14K, 14K to 27K, 27,000 to 84, 88,000, right? And the beautiful thing was, was I did it all on Snapchat, documented. I did it all on Facebook, documented. Add me on Facebook, scroll down, whatever timeline, you can see all that stuff. At that point, I went, copped a C63 AMG. At that point in my life, that was like my dream car. I thought that was the most amazing thing. That was like the pinnacle of everything I could ever have. Success is a moving target. So the moving target started to get bigger. Once I started seeing success, I was like, damn, all right, let me start helping other people. At that time too, because the niche was so new, I got to join a company and uh, I kid you not, I grew this company. I was a part and helped grow this company to a billion dollar plus brand, helped hundreds of thousands of people all across the world, multiple different countries learn about Forex trading and trading their time, no longer trading their time for money, but their money for money, teaching people about cryptos and NFTs and all that stuff. And you know, it was an amazing journey. At the time I was 21, I hit a, I hit a multiple six-figure uh, position in my life. 
And uh, I kid you not, I was so happy. I told my parents, yo, we're lit. We, we don't have to do anything ever again. And they were like, yo, that's amazing. Now let us see your grades. And I was like, yo, I was like, I, I don't have the login. They're like, okay, we'll just log in on your computer. I was like, my computer's dead. They're like, do it on your phone. I was like, my phone's not working. My dad was like, here, use my phone. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to do it. And at that point, he was just like, it's okay. He's like, I know you don't go to school anymore. But they were just happy that I was so driven and, you know, I, I made it happen with what it is that I wanted to do with my life. So guys, man, you know, coming into it for until 2022, I was a part of a company and, uh, you know, I loved it. Everything was amazing. Ended up not really wanting to do it anymore. Ended up resigning. Started my own private trading group. Started my own, uh, not not like a like a course or like what we have with TradeStar, but I started a, 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 tr a trading fund with some of my good friends in Dallas. Uh, we absolutely crushed it. We ran it up. Um, we took the money we made from one business. We reinvested into the next business. We reinvested into the next business. And then I kid you not, 2022 was the most amazing, insane year of my life. Things that I never thought were possible in a short amount of time became very possible and real. You know, I can sit here and talk about like, you know, chains and watches and Lambos and, you know, Ferraris and McLarens and, you know, all the drip and, you know, the trips and, you know, like the luxury lifestyle and all that extra stuff. But all of that was a byproduct of what every lesson in my life had taught me, right? You know, my biggest takeaway for you guys who are still watching this video, because I know it's long, is that whatever it is that you want out of your life, you can really manifest your life. But you got to believe in yourself more than you believe in anything else in this world. The reason why some people never see success in anything that they do is just their belief system is all fucked up. They don't believe the way that they're supposed to believe. So I would say this year, we're about to go into 2024. It's time for you to one, find a vehicle to become successful. It could be Forex trading, crypto trading. It could be stock trading. It could be e-commerce, drop shipping. You could sell shirts. You could do literally anything, but it's time for you to find something you're passionate about. Turn the passion into a paycheck. Guys, you know, this is a video just about what life has looked like, you know, traveled all across the world. I literally have gotten everything I've ever wanted in my life. I kid you not. I got every single thing I've ever wanted. Like whether it was a materialistic thing, whether it was a goal, whether it was helping my parents retire, whether it was going to see something or experiencing something or whatever, like, you know, I literally got to a point where I was able to get everything I ever wanted. And then, you know, what comes after that is, you know, paying it forward, helping the next person do the same thing, uh, trying to inspire the youth to do something bigger because at the end of the day, your life is limitless, but you're the leader and you're the controller and you're the pilot of your life. So, Take every lesson, take every piece of everything and, and let that be the reason why you become successful. And above everything else, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. If you found something relatable, whether it's, you know, being a first generation American, whether it's dropping out of school and going all in on your passion or your business, let us know. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like I said, and we're going to have more amazing content to come. Y'all take it easy.